let's hope this goes well okay hi guys i hope you are all well so this is gonna be another story time video and i'm actually trying out my vlogging camera to film a normal video today i don't know if it's too zoomed on to me let's zoom out a little bit now the good thing is about about this i don't have to like focus or anything because it automatically focuses anyway so today is going to be a story time video. I tried filming this video once and I think I just need to film it again. Let me just get straight into the video and if you don't understand what 50 Naira is or don't understand how much 50 Naira is or you don't even know what a Naira is then you will understand during this video. This certain thing happened when I was in Nigeria last time I went in, in February. Was it February or January? I had just landed in Lagos and I was on my own so I was like I didn't know Lagos Airport at all and I've never been to Lagos, that was my first time in Lagos so I was like oh my god I am lost, I don't know what I'm doing, whatever I was supposed to wait for my friend Hanifa who was supposed to come and pick me up like as soon as I got there but she was stuck in traffic and if you know Lagos, if you know Nigeria, you know Lagos traffic is just disgusting in journeys that can just be like 15-20 minutes you can sit in traffic for like three hours i'm not even kidding i called her and told her that i had arrived i've got my luggage and everything and she ha was telling me that they're still on the way they're still far away and the traffic is mad i'm just like oh god now i have to wait for ages so i stood near the entrance i was just waiting there and i had my phone in my hand just checking my instagram and stuff because i had my sim card from last time i was in nigeria and i had a bit of data left on my phone on my sim card so i was like yay let me just go through instagram tell people i've arrived whatever but while i was doing that um you know if i don't know what it's like in other countries but in nigeria in the airport there's always people coming up to you that work there and they're like oh do you want some help do you want me to carry your stuff do you want me to help you take your bags to the car do you want me to help you get a taxi i'm still waiting for my friend and i don't need any of that so i kept on refusing i'm like i'm fine i'm fine and these people always want money at the end of it and i actually didn't have money on me at the time so i was like um i'm fine i just wanted to avoid them because i didn't have nairas on me and you know in nigeria you pay with naira They're, that's their currency i just assumed that when hanifa came she would be right in front of the entrance i would just drop into the car obviously i didn't know the lagos airport i'd never been to lagos before i'm waiting there for like three hours literally three hours i was waiting i was standing there and i kept on refusing people's help and whatever so at one point hanifa calls me and she's like habiba do you know what you're gonna have to come outside and you're gonna have to walk on this road and down this road because the car it's gonna take way too long for the car to come all the way in and the arm the police is here so they won't let us stop and da 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 and i was like girl i don't know my way around here how am i just gonna be walking outside with three massive bags and i can't even i don't even know where i am i don't even know where i'm going so she's like have you ever get someone to help you so at the point i was like okay there was this certain guy that kept on coming madame do you need some help madame do you need some help i kept on saying no so i was like listen i need your help um i need to go to my friend's car and she's parked gonna be somewhere i don't even know where she's gonna be so i called hanifa i let him speak to her on the phone and he's like yeah 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 i know where she wants you to stop i know where she wants you to go and i was like okay we had to wait a little bit longer because she wasn't there yet i was just tired i wanted sleep i just it was so hot guys lagos was so humid like it was nothing like nothing else it wasn't like abuja i wasn't used to it i was just dying so we were waiting for hanifa until she called me and she's like okay start walking down so he actually called one of his friends to come and help with the bags and he was i said to him from the beginning bit, bit, uh, i said to him from the beginning listen yeah i actually don't have money okay i don't have anything on me because i know he's gonna be like oh you know uh, can you give me something at the end and i actually didn't have anything on me like i think i had some things in my purse but i didn't really know at the time and i just thought that i didn't have anything so i was like listen i don't have anything on me so you know like i'm sorry but you know just letting you know you're helping me for free um, and he's like no it's okay you'll find something you'll find something and even if it's more i'll take it i don't mind i was like okay then cool so we're walking to the car um, Buki, uh, Hanif was outside the car and she came out and you know we hadn't seen each other in a while we hadn't seen each other in like three months or something since the last time I was in Nigeria and she jumped on me I jumped on her we got excited like woo Hanifa Habiba and we were just getting really excited about seeing each other again and then we started walking to the car now Hanifa took one of the bags and was dragging it the guys were holding my other bags I was literally not holding anything they were holding all of it like even my hand luggage they were holding everything so I was like come I'll walk on my own 
two steps. I take two steps. Two steps. Hanifa's already galloping in front of me, like not even that far. But she's in her own world, in her galloping horse world, because she doesn't. She wants to ignore the fact that I'm behind and I'm not holding anything. So she's just galloping to the car, apparently, because the car can't park there for too long. So she was galloping. The guys were around me. There was one here and there was one behind me. And then out of nowhere, I don't even know how it happens. I really don't know how that happened, guys. Let me, let me explain to you with visual effects, okay? So this is me walking, walking, walking. Hanifa's there galloping away. Out of the, out, out. Just, gone. And then these two guys are like around me. There's two guys holding my bags. And then all of a sudden, literally like that. Like I can't even explain it other, any other way. I literally fell flat on my face. I don't understand how that happened, what I tripped on. All I know is there was glass in my knees, there was glass in my hands, I was all cut up, and my face was on the floor, and I was so embarrassed, and everybody was so shocked, that nobody even came to help me. I was just like, and then I just started awkward laughing. Do you know when you do that awkward laugh when you just do something really embarrassing? And Hanifa's still galloping. She didn't even realize I fell. She's just galloping, galloping, galloping away. Like there's nothing, there's no tomorrow. And I'm just on the floor, flat on my face. And this girl just, I mean, amazing friend. Anyway, these two guys, they're so shocked that I fell in such a hippopotamus way that they're just standing there and they're just not even, they're just like, oh, madame, are you okay? And I'm just like, Wow, wow, wow. So anyway, we keep on walking. We're walking to the car, we're walking to the car and I'm kind of taking bits of glass from my hands and you know, try not to cry because it really hurt. I went and I was like, Hanifa, didn't you just see that I fell? She's just in her own world and she's like, let's get in the car and she starts packing the bags in the car and the guys start packing the bags in the car and I'm just standing there still picking glass out of my hand. So then, the guy comes up to me, the main guy, and he's like, so do you have something to give me? And I was like, listen, I don't have anything. Hanifa didn't have any cash on her. I was like, listen, I'm going to check my bag and I'm going to see what I have. So keep in mind, guys, this guy was so nice during. Like, he was so nice, everything, like, respectful, everything. So I take out my purse. I had one purse which had, like, my, my English money in it. And then I had this Turkish purse that I had from Turkey. And I had been putting some things in there like nairas and stuff from my last trip but I literally all I had in there was 50 naira okay now 50 naira in pounds is less than a penny okay less than a penny not less than a pound less than a penny you can't really get anything with less than you can't even get anything with a penny let alone less than a penny even penny sweets are not even pennies anymore so anyway I had 50 naira in my purse that's all I had I think I li that's literally all I had 50 naira 50 naira I pulled out the 50 naira I gave him the 50 naira he saw the 50 naira he was gonna slap me literally he was looking at me like are you mad are you crazy he was even not going to take the 50 naira from my hand I didn't actually realize at that point what 50 naira was I don't know why I was not thinking as well as I should have I thought Maybe 50 naira is a bit more. I don't know why though, because I've been to Nigeria before. Utmost confidence, I was pulling that 50 naira from my pocket and giving it to him in his hand. He looked at me, oh, the floor was gonna start crumbling underneath us. Wallahi, the floor was crumbling underneath us. He looked at me like he wished he'd never even laid his eyes on me. And he was like, Madame, 50 naira. Are you, are you sure you don't have anything else? I literally did not have anything else in my pocket. Even, I didn't even have British money because last time I came, I, I took British money with me but there's no point because I just take money out with my card and I didn't need cash at that point so I didn't have cash in, on me and guys, it was, it was, it was so embarrassing. It was embarrassing, it was funny. We laughed about it the whole way when we were going to my friend's place after. It was hilarious, but it was it was funny. I don't know if this story is gonna be funny to you guys, but the situation was just hilarious. Like it was embarrassing and hilarious and funny, and we just keep we kept on laughing about it. Like even 
I'm just not over it. I still find it really funny. And whenever I tell someone the story, they're like, what the hell? How could you give someone 50 naira? Like, just don't give him anything. I shouldn't have given him anything. I don't understand why I actually pulled that 50 naira. I don't even know why I even pulled it out of my purse. I don't even know why it was in my purse to begin with. I don't know how it got there. But anyway, that's the story for me today. This is my second story time video. If you found it interesting, let me know. Because I feel like I'm not that good at telling stories, but I hope this was good. And let me know if you think the footage quality is good. Because maybe I'll film more of my talking videos with this. Because it's better because I don't need to like, I can never be out of focus because it will always focus. I love my Nigerian folk. I love Nigeria, inshallah. I'm hoping to be there very soon again. I've got plans. I'm not going to tell you the plans yet. But um, inshallah, once my planning progresses and stuff, I will let you guys know what's been cooking up. Um, but anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I don't want to keep babbling on. Um, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.